Hello and welcome to my game development channel. On this channel I'm going to be starting off with posting amateur sort of fundamentals of game visual effects. Um, there's a lot of tutorials out there for the more complex side of visual effects. Like once once you've sort of already like greased your wheels and got it into the industry, there's a lot of techniques out there that people have been showing off on real time effects and across the internet, you know, and, and that's fantastic, especially for like members of, of the FX group like me who have been doing this for quite a while now. Um, however, there's not a whole lot out there for people just trying to, you know, get into the industry or wanting to learn effects, even for a side project or something like that. So I just wanted to create some sort of quick and straight to the point tutorials just showing off a lot of common techniques that I believe a lot of us probably take for granted just because to us it's so obvious now we've been doing it for a long time but there really isn't anything out there for complete beginners so here we go let's get started In this tutorial we'll be starting off with creating a very basic shield effect this effect you'll see across many games and it's a, a sort of um, technique used pretty much everywhere it hasn't really changed it's, it's been around for ages and well, it still works it's simple and very flexible so Let's get started. To start off with, all you need is to create a sphere in whatever 3D program you're using. Just leave the UVs as default. I've got I've got a picture up here of sort of my UVs. You can just see that they're essentially just a default sphere. It's all you need. Next, we'll need to move on to exporting it. Exporting the sphere. All you need to do is simply export your sphere as an FBX from whatever 3D program you're using. Now, open up Unreal and inside your content browser, just right click and import your mesh. Next, I want you to right click and create a new material. Once you've created that material and named it shield or whatever else you want to call it, then open it up and we'll sort out the nodes that go on inside. Once you've created your material, open up your material. You'll be presented with a screen with a big node in the middle of a sort of grid. Select the big node and set your blend mode to additive. You could use translucency for this video, but I don't, I don't want to deal with the extra channel, essentially of having to sort out the alpha channel. So for now, we're just going to keep it basic. I'll, I've, I'm going to post a big node tree with this, and it, it sort of has the pipe for the alpha to go through, um, if you want to set that up. But just to keep this video short, I'm just going to go over the additive side of things. So for this part of the tutorial, I recommend going to real time effects, where I'm going to post this video, and below, I will post an image sort of containing all of the nodes and descriptions of what all of the nodes are essentially doing in this tree. Just to speed things up, I, I, I personally believe the fastest way to learn materials is to sort of pick up somebody else's work and essentially pick it apart, try to join different things together and so on, and really seeing, like, disconnecting bits and pieces and really seeing what each bit does, because it's very hard, like, somebody just explaining a load of jargon to you doesn't really mean a whole lot. So, the best way to do it really to me at least is to just play around with it so if you go below I'll, I'll link an image in real time effects and you can just open it up and check out sort of what I'm doing inside this material I try to go over some important nodes though so looking at the start of this energy shield um, pipeline I've essentially got a texture texture sample with a panner a panner essentially scrolls your texture in a direction that you set it to and it, Connected to my panner, I've got a texture coordinate. The texture coordinate lets you set the tiling of the texture, essentially. Um, from there, I've got my shield texture plugged into a multiply node, which then has a color connected to it. Essentially, multiplying your texture over the top of a black and white image with... Uh, sorry, let me start that again. Multiplying your texture with uh, a color will essentially dye that image that color if it's a black and white image. It creates some funny results if you're using a colored image. Next, um, I'm adding a color uh, after that multiply node. What this is essentially doing is just flooding the texture with a, a, this color. Um, I've got it set to a quite dark color, so essentially what I've got at the moment is a little hexagon grid because everybody loves honey mancy in the future with sci-fi shields I, I i don't know why it really just does it but essentially i've got black little grids and if i were to just plug this straight into my emissive color like the end of the pipe my shield would have big transparent areas i essentially just want a light glow in between my cracks and 
just just to fill out the shield a bit more so it feels not like a bunch of just hexagons floating around it feels more like a whole barrier next i've plugged it into a clamp mode this essentially stops your color from going above a one value this essentially once colors start going above like a one in value they can start to glow admittedly you got to get the number pretty high but it's just best to clamp it just to keep it safe. I don't even know if I needed this node, this is just, just a just in case node. Next, I've used a Fresnel. What I'm doing with this Fresnel is a Fresnel is essentially... How do I explain a Fresnel? If you look at a ball and imagine the sides of the ball that... So imagine that ball... How to do this? Okay, I've got it. So. You've got your ball made up out of polygons. Each of those polygons has like an arrow pointing out of them, imagine. So that the the faces pointing towards the camera, they will be, for a Fresnel, either invisible or visible. As they start to as we go around the, the orb and the faces of those faces start to face away from the camera, they start to become more transparent. So Essentially, what this does is it will either, we can set it to glow the outside of the mesh, or we can set it to only glow the inside of the mesh. This uh, Fresnel is actually commonly used for things like, for example, you want, you want a shock wave. You don't want, if you've built like a sphere mesh, and you want to expand it outwards, you generally don't want the edges being visible because otherwise you can just see it's an expanding sphere so what we'll do is we'll alpha out the edges of that sphere and then when it expands it sort of looks a bit more like a volumetric shape rather than a, just a sphere expanding like a, you know a spinning around texture going on it so uh, what we're doing here is essentially we're inverting this to make sure that we've got a glowing edge and then we're just adding this on top of our color pipe what this is going to do is essentially we've got our hexagonal grid looking honeycomb thing you know every every game has this effect and then we're we're glowing the edge of the sphere just just to give it some i don't know i don't know what it's meant to represent everybody does it it just looks good i'm not going to try to explain it <laughs> let's move on now after we've done all that all we have to do is plug this into our emissive color and that's us done um if I have failed to explain any of these things properly, you can check out, obviously, the Unreal Engine documentation on how all these nodes work. Or if you're, if you're not such a, so good at sort of reading these very technical nodes, um, just let me know in the comments and uh, I'll make sure to make a video on like describing these nodes a little better with some images perhaps. It's, it's a bit hard trying to explain these things on the fly. I'm just trying to finish this video tonight. Um, it's already, it's already 12.30 apparently, great. Um, so yeah just just let me know i i, I don't want to be confusing I, I want these videos to be accessible to anybody so anyway now all you need to do like now we've plugged this into our immersive color we just need to apply this material to our mesh and let's check it out in the world ah yes look at this nice uh what is this like 20 fps video i just picked up some program and apparently it doesn't record faster than 30 fps this is honestly great um when the the big um, sphere is colliding with the ground, you're seeing a glow around objects it's colliding with. Like that, that, that's the depth fade node at work right there. Um, as you see, around the edge of the sphere, we've got that that glowing edge. That's from the Fresnel node I was talking about before, with the faces facing away. Essentially, the faces that face away from the camera more glow more. The ones that are facing towards the camera do not glow. That's how you get this, this rim edge to the effect. And I've even included... Uh, I don't know, a, a, a fantasy effect, because, uh, I don't know, I don't know why everybody get, like, makes these sci-fi shields and they're all just made out of honeycombs for some reason, but it's a staple, so I decided to s stick some caustics on a texture, so, on, on a sphere, sorry, so, here you go, it's, we'll just call this the fantasy effect. You can, you'll notice a bit, it's a bit darker too, I actually made this um, alpha blend, just, just to mix it up a bit, uh, the, that's the translucent one I was talking about just before um anyway i hope this tutorial was useful it's admittedly the first video tutorial i've ever done it's this is probably a mess it doesn't make much sense but hopefully i'll learn and maybe if people are interested i could remake it in the future when i get a bit better so I, i'm always open to feedback guys uh i want these to be useful to people i don't want to 
you know, to, people to just watch this and have no idea what the hell I'm talking about. So, yeah, I don't know. It's been fun creating it. It Making these videos takes a lot longer than I thought they would, um, admittedly. I've, I've been at this for like, what, like three hours now or something. Um, but, I don't know, I, I want to get back to the community. Uh, the real-time fix forums has been great, and, I don't know, if I can help some people get into our industry as an effects artist, then that would be freaking cool. So, I'll catch you guys later in another video. Ho hopefully a little bit more polished than this one. <laughs> oh, and add me on Twitter. I got one of those now. Link below.